HBCU Digest Radio, welcome back. Uh, conversations with distinguished voices from the historically black college and university sector. Today we are joined uh, by a friend of the show, Morehouse College President Dr. David Thomas, uh, who is one of a triumvirate of institutions which formally today announced that they will extend online and distance learning into the fall semester uh, with no residential or on-campus component. So Dr. Thomas, we appreciate your time on what we know is going to be a busy morning for you. Can you tell us how how what 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 obviously what led to this decision uh, when just a few weeks ago you know the college was making preparations for a hybrid online yep. in-person model and then obviously numbers have changed but walk us through what those what those behind the scenes conversations look like for the school to be able to make this announcement today um well we had always uh, um you know take or since um we had to evacuate the campus in March. Um, we had always been planning for three different options that, uh, uh, as possible for the fall. Mm -hmm. One um, was uh, the hope for everything would be back to normal. Two was the low density hybrid model that we announced on July 1st. And three was that we would remain virtual for the entire semester and uh, it was really a matter of following the science and the conditions taking place here in Georgia, as well as from a number of other states where we get a substantial number of our students. Um, you know, and, 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 uh, and many of those states are, um, you know, um, in the South, Texas being one of them. Uh, Alabama being another, and um, we d have always worked off of the idea that our number one priority is the health and welfare of our students. And you know, some of the some of your listeners may recall that um, Morehouse College was the first college in the nation, actually, it turned out, uh, 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 in Division One and Division Two, to announce the cancellation of the fall uh, football and cross-country season. Correct. And that, again, and that was when we thought we might be in the hybrid model, but we were still putting our, our uh, students' health and safety first. Um, and as we started, again, to look at what's going on here uh, in Georgia, in Atlanta, in particular, Fulton County, it became very clear that um, we, we would not be able to avoid, even with the stringent testing protocol and monitoring and social tracing protocols that we were going to put in place, uh, that uh, we probably couldn't avoid uh, Morehouse becoming a hot spot and not just Morehouse, but the entire AUC. Um, and uh, that led all three presidents uh, to the same conclusion uh, that we didn't feel uh, that the probabilities were high enough that we could avoid uh, this becoming a hot spot. Um, and two reasons. One is the extent to which the, the, the disease seems to be spreading, um, and in particular among young people. Um, and um, right here in Atlanta, we're watching uh, the ICU beds available move uh, to, uh, you know, over 90%. And uh, that, that raised issues about, you know, if students do get sick, uh, the availability of health care and our ability to uh, to guarantee uh, high quality access. So those things came together. And um, I think the other decision rule that uh, we've used here at Morehouse, and I think it applies to my colleagues at Clark and Spellman, is that um, we're not about being right. We're about making the right decision. So we had made one decision uh, to go hybrid, but in the face 
of, of, of new information, uh, we realized that um, that was no longer the right decision. Um, and, and that's been our posture. You know, we've talked before about the great flexibility that the, the private HBCUs have um, because they're, yeah. they're, they're not as constrained by, you know, what legislature or governing board uh, in terms of a state or state politics has to say. But when you make these decisions, obviously, that you know, where they're, they're with the primary focus of the institution's well-being. But is there yeah. any discussion uh, with you or your board or the faculty, staff, alumni, students? when talking about these things about the politics outside of Morehouse and do they have any impact on the decision-making process at all? Yeah, great question. Um, in, in, ever since we've been in this COVID moment, um, I have purposefully avoided uh, making those considerations central to any decision, um, because, for example, Georgia Tech is scheduled to open. Uh, essentially, you know, that's driven by the politics of the state, in my view. Um, and uh, um, Georgia State, uh, similarly, um, Albany State, a fellow HBCU, um, Fort Valley. Um, which are all under the state system, right. but we've not uh, made that a special consideration uh, in any of our decisions. And I and I guess the reason I ask just as a follow up is because we've seen you know the posture taken even as high as the White House, where you know let's be frank, if you if you institutionally follow the narrative of the administration or the Trump administration that you'll be rewarded. We'll, we'll help you get resources. We'll help you get, you know, uh, equipment and protective, you know, items, and we'll help you probably establish new programming. And so th right. there would seem to be a pressure that if you don't play ball, so to speak, that there's going to be a political price to pay, even for a private school. Um, uh, is, that, is that something as, as a president, yeah. you have to, you have to let your folks know like, yeah, we can do this. And we know, you know, that we're, we're a leading institution, regardless of what, you know, help crisis we're in and we would like to do things that that speak to the the black american experience and we know that coronavirus has a a prominent role in our experience today and so we'd like to lead in that way but you got to know that there there may be a price if we do this um yeah <laughs> um, I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we, you know the answer I mean you know you you, you frame it perfectly yeah. um that is a potential price. Uh, if, if you look at um, our announcements, I think what you'll find is that, um, you know, we don't talk about the political debate. We put it all in the context of doing what's best for our students, given our capability. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, there may be some larger schools, for example, um, you know, Georgia State, with much more, or Georgia Tech, much more in the way of resources than we have, more space uh, to do uh, social distancing residentially and, and other things. So we try to keep it, you know, or at least, you know, our messaging as far away from the pol political side of it as possible. I mean, you know, what's happening here in Georgia, you've got the mayor of the city of Atlanta being sued by the governor mm -hmm. uh, of the state. Um, you know, we, we, we've tried to be very clear that, you know, I, I, we don't have a dog in that fight. Um, we're just focused on doing the best we can do for our students. From a, from a public health perspective and even from a moral imperative, do you feel that it is a privilege for schools like Morehouse and the HBCU sector when it comes to sports, when it comes to in-person instruction to to bear the responsibility of saying we're, we're going to take a stand and regardless of the politics, as you mentioned, regardless of, you know, the social stuff, 
we're going to take a stand for black people and say it's not safe to be together at this time. Is that fair or is that is that is that a privilege for the institution or is that a burden? Because we're kind of out front of everybody in the industry to say it. I think it is a privilege and a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, as we've made our choices, we've been very aware of the fact that many of our students uh, are coming from um, predominantly black communities um, that are hotspots for, you know, um, the spread of the disease. Um, And if our students are on campus and we become a hotspot, as try as we might, our students will go back out into the communities at, at, at some point in the day um, and uh, potentially, you know, be spreaders. Mm. Um, so I think it's a privilege that, you know, schools like Morehouse um, can focus on the black community and our service to it. Uh, and at the same time, I think it's a, it's, it's a responsibility uh, for us to do the best by um that community given what we know and i think we have a responsibility to lead um you know even when it requires uh sacrifice so the reality of a morehouse college is that um a substantial part of our uh financial model is housing and meals um, that's what pays the rent and upkeep on our building is that income. And we will forego that income, uh, next semester. Um, but that's our responsibility in my view. And it is a sacrifice, quite frankly. Are you worried that you may have some current or potential students who say, man, I got to get about this house and that they may be induced to say, well, let me seek opportunities elsewhere that may serve that whether it's in their health interest or not, is that a concern of yours? Well, it's definitely a concern. Um, you know, it's a, you know and, and there's a broader concern about enrollment. Um, we already have planned that our enrollment will be down 25% as a result of students making the kind of choice you just described, as well as... Um, our students coming from families that are likely to be disproportionately impacted uh, from an employment standpoint, you know, uh, more than a few of our students we know of have had at least one parent uh, uh, or another relative who was supporting their Morehouse journey lose their job. Um, And all the statistics are telling us that not only are we being Uh, or is the black community being disproportionately affected from a health standpoint, but disproportionately and negatively affected from an economic standpoint. So uh, I worry uh, that the the long and short of it is, yeah, I I, I worry that uh, we won't have the enrollment uh, that uh, we expect and we've already uh, modeled that we'll be down. Um, and you know, uh, uh, one group that I worry a lot about it is the, the freshmen who've accepted, um, admission to Morehouse. And I know some parents are already having the discussion. Why don't we just, why don't we just have a gap year? Um, uh, and, and that way the student will have, you know, four years of the traditional Morehouse experience. Uh, residential experience Um, so I worry and then the final question I know in the spring uh, you know there were there were plans to say we're going to move some events uh, noticeably commencement the 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 uh, spring 2020 event is that rescheduled what what will logistics look like for some of those key events that you initially plan to move to the fall what will come of them well um the, the, the major one was the move of commencement 
from May 19th of this of of uh, of um, this year. Now it's scheduled to be um, December 13th. And what we've decided there is that if conditions allow, um, we will do that as an in-person event. We're lucky in that we have a, a, a 6,000 seat um, arena where we could do that graduation with social distancing. Um, and uh, our seniors uh, have made it clear, quote unquote, we want to have our day. Mm -hmm. And we're working toward that. But if come December, that proves not to be the, the, the wise and, and prudent decision for health reasons, we will have a virtual commencement. And in true Morehouse fashion, uh, we're putting equal energy into planning both options so that, uh, you know, as we monitor the situation and get closer to the event, um, we'll be able uh, to pivot in either direction and provide a successful experience. Other um, things, uh, events like homecoming, you know, there won't be a homecoming this year, although, um, you know, I've, I've had some of our uh, creative uh, alumni, uh, you know, suggest we could do a virtual homecoming and essentially do it across the entire United States. Um, and uh, we've had some virtual alumni events uh, that have actually been very successful uh, and multi-city. Um, so don't be surprised if uh, the ingenuity of, uh, of our alumni doesn't come forth uh, and uh, lead us to have a virtual homecoming. 